Spring ball is right around the corner for the Sun Devils, and these are the offensive players who have the most to gain with good performance. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. These days, every potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in to the podcast today and tomorrow. We are going to be previewing the offensive side of the football today and the defensive side of the football tomorrow for players who have the most to gain during spring ball. We are just over a week away from the kickoff to spring practices, and it's very exciting because although there's a lot of returning players for the Sun Devils from last year, there's a lot of new players that are coming in as well. And this list is going to be a little bit of both. There's There are some, some transfers coming in who have a lot to gain. There are some returning players. There's a couple of freshmen. And that's where we're going to uh, take a look today at, you know, who can gain the most? And that can look like a lot of different things. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can earn a starting job, right? Because quite a few of these positions feel locked up. Like we we know who the quarterback is. We know who the starting tight end is. We know who wide receiver one is, running back one. We have a good feeling, at least, of how those are going to shake out. But of course... There are depth positions. There are other starting positions. An example, the offensive line has a lot of guys who can potentially step in and find themselves important jobs. Like there are a lot of opportunities here and a good spring ball session for these guys. And they'll have about a month to show off what they can do is going to really start them off in the right direction because they take that momentum and they, They start applying it to the off or off field um, off season when they are going to be working by themselves and creating chemistry with each other over the summer, working out, uh, doing drills and everything. It's a very important opportunity for them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the conversation started. We will start, of course, as always, with some honorable mentions. I have a handful of them. The first one and the most obvious one is Jaden Rashada. Yes, he's quarterback one. To me, there's no question about it. But nobody's position should be locked up in theory. Now, some guys like Elijah Badger and Cam Scadaboo, yeah, they've got their position locked up. But in theory, you should be competing consistently to maintain that role. And that's for Jaden Rashada because you do have Trenton Borgay back. And having Borgay back in the folds is going to help bring out the competition here, secure a veteran presence both in the position and in the locker room, and have a positive impact for everyone around him. People play better because he's able to rally the troops. So Jaden Rashada needs to come out and have another strong spring ball. Uh, He did that last offseason. He did it during training camp, and it got to a point where he was the week one starter for the team. And to be able to repeat as your week one starter, he needs to come out and play out of his mind. So spring ball is very important for him. Again, I understand that QB one should be locked up, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a lot to gain, especially when you consider how much time he missed last year, a good spring ball session will be able to propel him to the next step in his collegiate career and the next step in his progression as a starting quarterback. 
huge opportunity. Next, I want to mention Bram Walden. It's not a secret. Bram Walden is one of my favorite players here, but there's a lot of new competition along the offensive line, both in terms of incoming freshmen as well as the transfer portal. Now, with Bram Walden, he got some starts last year. I thought he looked pretty darn good. He, of course, was banged up with injuries, as was everybody else. So he he needs to be able to come out and show that, A, he's healthy, and B, he's going to find a way to stand out amongst the plethora of new faces and returning faces to be able to lock down a starting spot. And he's pretty much competing for left tackle, in my opinion, because at right tackle, it should be Emmett Bully returning from injury. I don't see any reason that he's not the starter for you. I really like Bully. We got robbed of him early in the season from injury. He's back. He's healthy. And he has some to gain as well. But to me, I look at Bram Walden and it's the premium position of being the left tackle and blah, 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 blah. A strong spring ball is going to go a long ways for him to getting those first team reps uh, during spring ball and then down the road during training camp and potentially being the week one starter on the blind side. One more guy I want to mention is Xavier Guillory. Of course, Guillory came in with a lot of fanfare during the offseason, and the first couple of weeks, he looked like a stud. In fact, he had a 47-yard touchdown in the first game of the year against Southern Utah. I mean, it was it was terrific. It was fourth down. It was it might as well have been a Hail Mary, and he was just able to get up and moss the guy. But after the first month of the season, he disappeared. And now there's a lot of competition at wide receiver because, of course, you have Elijah Badger. Uh, Troy O'Mary broke out towards the end of the season, the last probably about two months. O'Mary was wide receiver, too. There were additions that uh, we're going to talk about as well that have a lot to gain here. But Guillory is going to be competing for his for his life right now because it's a deep position for Arizona State. You've got plenty of guys. and there's there's going to be running backs as well who are going to factor into the equation of the passing game. So he needs to play at his best. There's a lot to gain here for Guillory. If he's able to play strong, he might be able to play himself back up into the, into the starting rotation or at worst, maybe like wide receiver four. And ASU is going to rotate these receivers a lot because there's there's a lot of guys here. It would be irresponsible to not get these guys touches. He's got a lot to gain. Now then let's go ahead and get into my top five guys who have the most to gain at spring ball. Number five. Well, not number five. I'm not ranking them per se, but the first guy I want to mention, how about that is Jalen Clem and Clem is the transfer from Washington. He played left tackle. He played guard. He's a very versatile player and that's where he's got the most to gain along the offensive line is because he does have that versatility and he can play outside and he can play inside. So when you've got the stiff competition from guys like Bram Walden, who I mentioned, but you also have some of the um, offensive linemen on the interior, like Cade Briggs and Ben Coleman and uh, Sione Finau and some of the freshmen that are coming in, that's going to be difficult to get a guard spot. If he, doesn't win against Bram Walden or Emmett Bully or Max Ionaker at the offensive tackle spots or some of the other guys they brought in like Josh Atkins. Like he's going to need to absolutely ball out in spring ball to be able to secure a spot. And the good news for him is, like I said, even if he doesn't win left tackle, he can still play guard. He's got a lot riding on spring ball and then heading in the training camp. Again, Spring ball is not the end all be all, but this is where you start building your momentum. And a transfer coming in like Jalen Clem has a lot to gain from a strong spring ball, especially if they get a little cute with him and they decide to line him up outside, line him up inside, put him on the right side, put him on the left side, whatever. Quite frankly, I think that's the way you should be going about it is finding ways to just line him up on the field see what he can do, see how he looks, play around with it. Because you know that he can, because he did it at Washington. This is not in in theory. 
this is a player who has shown versatility. And when you've got a guy like that, you need to get creative. And spring ball is a perfect opportunity for that because spring ball is where you're going to start seeing how everything lines up for you and seeing how things can work and things can't work. Seeing where guys can show versatility, seeing where guys are maybe pigeonholed into one spot. And that's fine. So that's where you're at right now. This is a huge opportunity for Jalen Clem to come in as a freshman and show show off the ability to play somewhere along the offensive line. I am of the philosophy, I've said this many a times, play your best starting five. I don't necessarily believe that you need to have guys that, oh, they they are a guard. They can only play guard. In a certain extent, yes, you can't force guys in. But with that being said, your best starting five is your best starting five. So getting these guys an opportunity to play somewhere is the most important thing. And with a guy like Jalen Clem, who can play different spots, that's huge. Big opportunity here for Jalen Clem. One of the biggest opportunities of any of the players who are going to be starting for the Sun Devils in 2024 or any of the guys who are looking to be massive key pieces. This is this is one of the biggest opportunities. And I would tell you on either side of the ball, Jalen Clem has some of the most to gain here. He could potentially lock up a starting job. He could win the left tackle battle. He could win the guard battle somewhere. Left guard more than likely because I feel like Ben Coleman's going to lock up the uh, right side. There's a lot to gain here for Jim Clem. But of course, there's other guys at skill positions who have plenty to gain as well. We're going to talk about them right now. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And just like all the new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Of course, the Yukon Huskies, who, by the way, I'm taking to win it all in my bracket, they can only be described as the Armada. This top seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there. So it's no wonder why they've landed the top overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win. And like I said, I'm taking them to win all of it. Despite four of the six power six conference champions standing in their way in the East region. Of course, Auburn looks like the Pathfinder and Oregon looks like the Nissan Rogue. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Also got to talk to you about our friends over at Amazon Fire. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers an amazing experience with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV and provides you with millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether you're in the opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament that's tipping off this week, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On, including the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the sports world from March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, go to www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Today, 
we dropped our Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown show, and it's available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, which you can find on YouTube. Experts, Annie Patton and Isaac Shade, two of my buddies, will break down their brackets and discuss everything you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you're getting your podcasts. By the way, I'm tuning into that myself because there's a lot for me to gain from knowing what I'm doing with my bracket. I encourage you guys to do it as well, especially if you are in a seriously competitive bracket tournament. Let's get back into our conversation now and take a look at the at the next two guys that have the most to gain for spring ball. We're going to take a look at the unheralded position here, and that's tight end. And I've talked about him before, and I'll talk about him again, and that, of course, is Bryce Pierre. Bryce Pierre has the inside track to be tight end one for this team and not even close to being tight end one. There's not too much competition here. And outside of Jaden Fortier, who very big fan of him on this podcast, but he is recovering from an ACL surgery. Ryan Morgan is there. That's about it. Like there's, there's a, there's the transfers you brought in. Uh, Mark Heston Douglas from uh, Florida state. Like there are guys here, but it, it should be Bryce Pierre's to lose. And that's where he's got the most to gain here is he can lock it up and he can make it. So there is no discussion. There's no ifs, ands or buts. It is Bryce Pierre's job last year. Uh, nothing too crazy. Although nobody had anything too crazy. 70 catches, 139 yards, but man, he looked pretty good at times. Don't let the box score fool you. There were moments where this dude just looked like a beast. I'm really excited about him. And I, I encourage you guys to get on the Bryce Pierre hype train too. This is a 6'5", 250 pound dude who moves very well, catches the ball very well, and is just creative after the catch. Guys as big as him aren't really supposed to move around the way he does. And he plays above the rim. It, it feels like he can be a 50-50 guy. He's shown that capability. I would love to see him take that step forward this year and really show off that he is that kind of guy that you just throw the ball up to and let him come down with it. I'm not saying this is Jalen Conyers, who we really hyped up last year, and I'm going to do my best to not hype up Bryce Pierre the same way because Conyers was definitely put on a pedestal by me and others. But with that being said, I'm all in on Bryce Pierre. Spring ball is going to give him an opportunity to lock up tight end one and really make it no competition. He does that. I, I mean, there, there's a big opportunity here. Kenny Dillingham likes using his tight ends. He likes having those big bodies out there. And quite frankly, having a big body for a young guy like Jaden Rashada is going to be huge. No pun intended. Because you need that safety valve. You need somebody that you know you can put the ball up to or you can check down to, and you're going to get something out of him. I really think that there is a path to a very, very big role in this offense. Jalen Conyers last year, 30 catches, 362 yards. I don't see any reason why Bryce Pierre can't match that. Maybe even do a little more because remember, Conyers missed a game and he um, didn't do anything in the first half against Southern Utah and was benched in uh, one of the games, I believe, against Colorado. Like, Conyers wasn't all the way there last year for one reason or another, whether he was sick or injured or otherwise. There was no doubt that if he was completely dialed in for whatever the reason was for 12 games, he would have put up much bigger numbers than what he did. This is where Price Pierre steps in. 
And Pierre still caught 17 passes, which, I mean, Conyers didn't even get double that. That's only 13 more catches than what Pierre had. And that's in a backup role. He could be the number two option in this offense. I truly believe that. How do you get that opportunity? You ball out and spring ball. I think Bryce Fierre can really assert himself as one of the top options in this offense. Really excited about him. Another guy I want to talk about, Kyson Brown. Brown could be the future of this backfield. Last year, he came in as a freshman. I think there was a lot of belief that he was going to redshirt, but that wasn't the case because he got touches in just about every game. And he deserved every touch that he got. 23 carries, 106 yards. For what it's worth, he caught nine passes for 49 yards, but I don't think he's going to see another big receiving role, especially when you got Cameron Scadaboo and Relief Brown and the host of other guys out wide and inside that are going to be catching passes. But where he can really lock up his position here is running back too. Last year, DeCarlos Brooks was the guy when he was healthy. When he was on the field, he was the difference maker. You had thunder with Cam Scadaboo and more thunder with the Carlos Brooks. And Brooks is going to come into training camp as running back two as well. He should. He's the veteran. He's proven. He's a stud. But Kyson Brown can assert him of that role. With a good training camp, or not training camp, with a good spring ball, again, this is how you build momentum. This is how you start to get your name out there, not just to the coaches, but to the fans. And the fans take note of like, hey, this Kyson Brown kid's pretty good. This 6'2", 205-pound true sophomore running back should be getting on the field more often than he is. And then he advertises himself during the season to potentially be the future of the position as running back one. Well, it's going to start in spring ball where he's going to really show off his stuff and strut his, his talent and the opportunity is going to be present for him to become running back two. It starts in spring ball. You got to impress the coaches. You got to continue to show off this talent, this this pure God given talent that we saw as a true freshman. How are you going to build off of a, for all accounts and purposes, successful freshman year? That's where we're going to be looking at the most. How does he take a step forward? Maybe he does become a better pass catcher. Maybe he is going to lock up that RB2 role. And remember last year, they were rolling out Carlos Brooks in the fullback position and having him and Scadaboo on the field at the same time. And Kyson is not built much more different than the Carlos Brooks is because Brooks comes in at 5'10", 220. So he's a few inches taller, a little bit lighter, but... They both play with that intensity as bruising running backs. Kyson Brown could take that role. Big opportunity here for him to be able to show off that he deserves extra touches. He deserves to be running back too. Again, you build momentum. There's two more guys we're going to talk about here in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sundables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find the right qualified professionals that are perfect for the role. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Because LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals and makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have as many qualified candidates as LinkedIn provides for you. It's so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding new ways to make the process easier. They even launched a feature that helps write job descriptions, making the process easier and quicker Two and a half million businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. 
That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. One more time, wherever you get your podcast, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. We're going to wrap up our conversation talking about two wide receivers. The first one is Jordan Tyson. And Jordan Tyson is, oh man, in terms of athleticism, he might be the most talented receiver on this roster. I I don't have concrete proof that he runs a 4-3, but he looks like it. This dude flies. He just zips around the field. We saw it when he was at Colorado, and he absolutely crushed ASU. We have we have proven talent, not talent, proven tape that shows that he can be a big play threat, and he can be somebody that can just absolutely torch you. He missed pretty much all last year recovering from an injury. And we didn't get an opportunity to see what he can do. He didn't record any stats for last year. He was very limited on snap counts towards the end of the season. Can he finally get on the field? And this is a very, very, very stiff competition here at wide receiver. You have Elijah Badger and Troy O'Mary and Xavier Dealer. You've got the the freshmen that are coming back, like Caleb Black and uh, Corbin Hendricks. You've got other guys that are coming in. There is no shortage of competition here at receiver. Jordan Tyson is going to need to work his you-know-what off to be able to get those snaps. Nothing is guaranteed for any of these guys, except probably Elijah Badger. But again, in theory... Even Badger should be competing for his starting job. In theory, Jordan Tyson has the pure talent, upside, and electricity to be wide receiver two across from Elijah Badger. And he could even advertise himself to become one of the top two or three receivers for the program in 2025 and beyond. And again, it starts in spring ball. It starts with building momentum to continue feeding a fed horse here. You build momentum. You get the attention of the coaches, of the staff, of the of your teammates, of the fans, of the media. They start noticing, hey, number zero is really, really torching guys right now. He's winning his one-on-ones. He's catching the ball well. He is showing off that pure speed that we have seen before. This is where it starts. Showing off that he can get to that next level. I'm really excited about Jordan Tyson. I was excited last year. I I did a whole freaking podcast talking about how good he was going to be before it kind of came out that his injury was going to take longer to recover from than we had anticipated. I'm still very high on Jordan Tyson. I'm trying to be a little weary because he didn't get on the field very much last year because he was nursing an injury. But if he's hundred percent healthy, I mean, look out for this guy. He's a stud last guy here who has the most to gain and somebody that I have said should be wide receiver two and very well could be wide receiver two. While I love Troy O'Mary, I'm talking about Melcon Stovall. Stovall, of course, is the graduate senior on the team, somebody who was able to show off a little bit of reliability last year as a pass catcher. He got on the field at times for return opportunities and special teams. He should be in line for a much bigger role this upcoming season. And I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be wide receiver too. Of course, he's going to have to compete. And of course, he's a little different than the other guys on this roster. He's 5'9", 185. He's a little bit of a spark plug. He is a get him the football and let him do something. Last year, he had a rushing touchdown on three carries. He caught 18 passes for 207 yards. It wasn't anything that you look at and you go, oh my God, like Melcon Stofall is a, a... conference player like he's not a first team all-conference player totally get that 
And I'm not saying he necessarily has the upside to get to that point. But what I am saying is he can lock up wide receiver too. Spring ball is going to have a ton of competition at receiver, like I just said with Jordan Tyson. And Tyson is one of the guys that he's going to have to compete with. But with that being said, one of the things that really helps Stovall stand out is the volume that he has had previously. He was a three-year player at Nevada where he caught over 100 passes and just about 1,000 yards. He's got the resume that kind of shows off like, a, hey, this guy... This guy might be your savvy veteran that you're looking for. You've got Elijah Badger, sure. But who's next to him? Troy O'Mary is a stud. He's a big dude. Doesn't have nearly as much starting experience as Mel Constoval has. That's where I really like him. That's where, to me, he's going to separate himself as one of the starters for this team. Mel Constoval, easily one of the guys I am most excited about going into spring ball. Somebody that I encourage you guys to pay attention to a little bit more because I don't know how many people know who Stovall is. I don't know how many average fans are aware that this savvy veteran who's seen it all and done it all might be ASU's wide receiver too. Last year with a cluttered receiving room, because, I mean, they were rotating guys insane amounts. You had Guillory and O'Mary and Stovall that each had 18 passes or more. This is a huge opportunity for Stovall to begin the process of locking up wide receiver two. For the hundredth time, it starts in spring ball. There's a huge, huge Huge opportunity for Stovall. Very excited about him. Outside of Jalen Clem, I think Stovall might have the most to gain here in spring ball. Those are the offensive players I think have a ton of opportunity here to begin standing out and making their case for large opportunities in the 2024 season. Who are the guys on offense you are most excited about? Who do you think is going to be a breakout? Do you like the guys I mentioned that I leave someone out? Let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter at RichieBrads36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Wherever you're reading your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. One more time, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Tomorrow, we are going to flip the script and take a look at the defensive side of the football and the guys who I believe have the most to gain on that side. Guys who could potentially find starting roles, guys who could potentially really up their usage and their snap count. Guys who can really show off. We're going to talk about them tomorrow, so make sure you're tuned in. Till then, keep it live right here on Locked On Sun Levels.